Good evening and salutations, my YNR fans. Um, it's been about maybe four or five weeks. I know about 98% I would sit there and say the names of, you know, these characters. And, um, this show... It's pacing works in a very interesting way. I I enjoy watching this soap opera, even though there's just moments in this show where I'm just like, <laughs> what? Um, now let's start off with Jack and Phyllis. Now I've read comments and stuff like that, and I know one person was like, you know, people are really loving this Jack storyline, and I'm like, you know what? To each his own. To each his own. You know, there's going to be a lot of times where I may like something that other people don't, and other people may love stuff that I'm just like, uh, okay. And um, this is no exception. Um, I've complained. Pretty much about the um, the pace of this 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 storyline and um, my gripes about the fact that this guy's been on there for so long, and this is what they're giving him. I think it is. Um, I don't think it's good. Let's just put it this way: the way that they're going about um, this story now. First of all, they knock on the door, and I'm just sitting there thinking, um, y'all been in this place for like a good four or five days, and y'all haven't found anyone. Why are we knocking for? Um, so anyway, they go in there, and it's pretty much more or less in the beginning, it's kind of the same beat. But, Phyllis does notice that there was perfume there, um... Meaning that someone was there, and Jack just sit there and say that he felt like he was being watched. He heard a noise, and he, um, you know, um, one part of you know, one part of the um, night. So he calls. Oh no, no, no! That's what happens. So after the perfume, and after sit there and talk about how he felt like he was being watched, and he heard a noise um, the day before. They're going through these boxes, and our first Jack is like, you know, we don't, we don't went over this before. Like, what, what are we gonna like learn differently? But they're going through stuff, and they notice a picture of a young girl. And in the back, there's a phone number. They call the phone number. They talk to this woman, and she agrees to meet them there. Now, after some time pass, um. Jack is just about to sit there and call her again because, you know, it was like, so, like, where is she? Did she get lost? I mean, LA traffic was, was good. So they're just about to sit there and call her. And then this woman shows up. Now, the thing for me is, um, I, I felt like, I don't think she might be the person who texted them. When she walked in, she was like, who are you? If she was the person who um, they talked to or, um, you know, was, was texting and stuff like that, you know, Jack was texting, then she would have automatically knew who he was. But when she walked in there, she was like, you know, when you said, oh, my name is Jack or whatever, he was like, okay, like, am I supposed to know that name pretty much? And she's like, you know, listen, uh, the bank closed the, this house and everything like that and everything is... You know, everything is closed or something like that. And, you know, Jack is like, you know, listen, I like to sit there and have a conversation with you about my son. And then she just stands there and looks like like she's puzzled. And, that, and my whole thing is like, I don't think that she's the same person that they talked to, that Jack talked to on the phone or who was texting him. Um, I could have swore. It actually said it was a different number. So... <sighs> It's finally starting to go somewhere. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about that because the minute that they start walking in and start doing the same beats for a little bit before they smelt the perfume, I was like, oh, 
what are we going to find next? A shoe? Like, <laughs> a, a piece of clothing? Like, what, what are we doing? We're just getting, like, breadcrumbs? And, like, uh, one second. It's, for me, I feel like it's been moving at this very cement pace. But it's finally starting to go somewhere, so... That's good. Took long enough. Damn. Um, now let's talk about... Let me just double check my notes. Oh, the girl's name is Allie. Now the girl's name that Jack was talking to on the phone is named Allie. I'm assuming that she may be Allie, but I don't, I don't feel like she's Allie though. Like, just the way that she walked in, it's like she didn't know who they were. Um, now let's talk about Dave, let's talk about Davon, um, Chance, and Abby. So they come to the door, you know, they knock on the door and they come in. And long story short, you know, Chance is like, all right, you know, we like to sit there and take baby Dom home today. And Davon's like, um, okay, this is kind of out of left field. You know, Chance is like, you know, listen, I'm about to go to my therapy appointment, and, you know, I like to sit down and spend some time with him before I go. You know, like, I hope that's not going to be a problem. And Dave, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just to keep the peace or whatever. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. You know, it was, I would plan on dropping him off later on today. He did sit there and say a comment like, you know, I wish I would have got like a heads up before y'all just like showed up. You know, I would have probably had some stuff to act like or more to the point, been more emotionally prepared to, you know, give him back as opposed to him just suddenly coming over last second being like, all right, we're going to take him home now. So they take him home and later on in the episode, you know, Amanda asks a couple of questions um, because at first they, you know, they're at the house or whatever and... You know, Davon's like, listen, um, I know he's doing therapy and stuff like that. And he's working through his problems, and that's great. Um, I think they actually said that at Society or what other... The, the coffee place, I don't know the name of the coffee place. But, um, you know, Davon's like, you know, how's that going to affect um, Dominic? You know, when you come back from these therapy sessions, it's not like you just leave your baggage there. It's like that energy, that vibe, you're still carrying that, you know, and if it's, if it's going to be awkward or bad or whatever, like, you know, for Abby, you know, you can only imagine how it's going to be for Dominic. Now, I'm not a parent, so I don't really know how that works. I mean, I, I'm just guessing from what people have said, um, you know, babies can kind of pick up on vibes and energy and you know, if you're in a bad mood or you're just really angry, it's like they can kind of pick up on that. So, you know, that's pretty much his concern. And one of the questions that you know Amanda asked is, you know, do you want do you want sole custody? Because this is after, you know, Dave on the Smith they're talking to Sharon and Ray and you know, asking Ray, like, you know, how is he doing at the job? You know, like when is he when is he coming back? Like what's what's going on with the status of that? And now Sharon, you know, like could you give me an up? Which is weird. He's like, could you give me an update on, you know, how is Chance doing with his therapy? And I'm like, bro, even if she did know, which she doesn't, but even if she did know, why would she tell you for? You know how those things work. I don't. You been through therapy. I, <laughs> what other answer did he expect to get other than no? And that's literally what she says. She's like, yo, listen, I can't do that. You know, patient, client confidentiality. Like, I just, you know, that's a thing. So, you know, that's one of the things that, um, you know, Amanda was sitting there saying. And I'm not going to lie. That's, there was stuff where she was sitting there talking about that just kind of lost me. Like, Amanda was like, you know, it seems like you're looking for problems that aren't there. And I'm like, what? Like, for me, it made more sense when she asked, did you want sole custody, you know? Um, now, again, I'm, like, maybe four or five weeks 
give or take, into this. I imagine there was some sort of maybe custody thing that was gonna happen. Um, at least that's what DC Soap Sanctuary told me. Like, they were gonna have some sort of custody battle, but then they just kind of just dropped it. So, yeah. Now, at this point, wow. I am so not, we'll, we'll just call it a, a gag room. That's good. Now, at this point, the episode kind of starts to go downhill. Um, you got Sharon, and you got Ray. And to be honest, they didn't really do much of anything in this episode. But one of the things that I did catch, because sometimes with this show, it's um, subtle. Really, really subtle. Or at least in this particular moment. So, Ray, you know, he kind of got the afternoon off or whatever for a little bit before he has to go and work later on. And Sharon is finishing up a couple of things. And, you know, they're kind of planning out their day. You know, they want to go bowling. They want to um, go to the bookstore. And, you know, Sharon's kind of hinting at the fact that they probably may want to, you know, sleep together because they haven't really done a lot of stuff in a while. And I'm pretty sure that's probably on the bucket list. But, um, you know, Sharon gets a call from, I think, one of her children or something like that, needs them to do something. So she's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, I can't really make it. You know, we'll plan it another time. And um, then Chelsea comes in. And, you know, I remember before Chelsea was having all these fantasy dreams about Ray and everything like that. So, you know, she comes over and she starts talking to him. And, you know, Ray is like, you know, let's not have some time or whatever. Let's just kind of chill and catch up or whatever. So that's pretty much what they want to do. And they want to catch up. They're laughing and they're just having a good time. Talking about Chelsea's son and sports and stuff like that. And... Now, when I sit there and talk about, like, subtle messages, I have a feeling, you know, that Chelsea's going to want to, you know, is going to um, go after Ray. And, you know, they haven't really been spent, you know, from what it sounds like, and I can't be sure, but from what it sounds like, they don't really get a lot of time alone to really, like, do a lot of stuff, a lot of fun stuff, and just kind of you know, be a couple or whatever, you know, she's running the cafe, he's working, and I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, maybe Ray's gonna be a little lonely one day, he wants to do something, and they've been vibing so well, and, you know, Chelsea has a thing for him, that I don't think it's much of a stretch before they wind up hooking up or whatever. I feel like it's going to be one of those out the blue sort of things. Um, <clears throat> that kind of sort of reminds me of the whole Nick and Phyllis breakup. Like, when I understood they had like an argument and then they just kind of broke up. Like, they were together, they were good and everything like that. And then you just had an argument. It was like, oh, oh, that's it. Oh, and, um,. So Chance goes to therapy, and for the most part, I felt like it was a lot of rinse and repeat, like they kind of touched on the same, um, you know, notes that they did before about the survival's remorse, you know, um, him feeling like, why did he survive, um, when everyone else was dead, he felt guilty, like he couldn't do more to save his team, you know, just, again, the typical stuff that he, he said last time when he was with this therapist. So, after that, he comes home, and, um, you know, Abby's like, you know, do you want to sit there and hold him and stuff like that? And at first, he's like, you know what, listen, I got all this negative energy. I'm feeling kind of white. You know, I don't want to sit there and kind of push that vibe on Dominic. And, you know, she's like, oh, well, why don't you just do it? He snaps at her. Then he apologizes, and... You know, he's like, I'm just kind of white or whatever. And, you know, she, she apologized for kind of pushing. Um, so it doesn't really go much of anywhere except for the fact that, you know, um, Abby's like, listen, we'll get through this together and yada, yada, yada. And that was 
pretty much about it for for them. Um, like I said, this is where it started to go downhill. When they started focusing on the other characters that just seemed kind of mundane and like hitting on the same notes from before with Chance, it was like... I think this soap opera to me is partly still interesting just because it's still new. Um, you know, still it's still new, it's still fresh, and you know, watching this watching this show and seeing these characters, I don't really know them that much. So for me, I feel like they could just do anything at any point in time. With GH, more or less, it you know, the characters that are on there, except for like a new character that's going to be on there. I already have a feel for them. I've been watching them for a long time. And you ever... Okay. I know this sounds kind of stupid. But you ever watched a show for so long that you just know what the character's going to do before they do it? You know? Like, you know how their emotion is going to sit there and react depending on whatever situation it is. And that's how I feel when I watch GH, like with Sunny and stuff like that. I know how you can sit there and respond. I know how Carly's going to sit and respond to a certain situation with these characters. They're still fresh to me. So, you know, it brings that level of the unknown. Yep, I think that's pretty much about it. So, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what you in the comment section below. And um, I will see you in the next video. Have a good weekend.